everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live-ish. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. I want to say thank you for joining us today. Now, I did say Zenfolio Live-ish because this is pre-recorded. While you guys are watching this, I'm actually going to be down at Fort Bragg for All-American Week with my son. So I'm going to take my son down to Fort Bragg. The 82nd Airborne Division puts on something every year called All-American Week. I'm going to take him down there, let him meet some of my old army friends, and let him see some people jumping out of planes and a lot of cool army stuff. So it's going to be really fun for him, and I'm super excited to be down there. But I did say this was live-ish because we do have Katie hanging out with you guys in chat, answering all of your questions. Hey, everybody. This is Katie hanging out with you in chat. So make sure that you show her some love in the chat. She's going to be there taking care of you guys so that I can be gone hanging out with my son. But today we're going to be talking about is how to buy prints and products in your account. So I'm going to show you how to go in there, how to purchase prints and products. This is really good for if you need like studio samples or maybe you need to place an order on behalf of your clients. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can do that. And then we're going to jump into doing a couple of site reviews. So we're going to be reviewing BenogPhoto.com, and then we're going to do a review for BZMStudio.com. Now, guys, there's only nine days left in our spring themed photo contest. And if you're not sure what it is or you haven't entered yet, the link to that is in the description below this video. If you have entered, make sure that you are sharing out your share link and getting those votes. So the way the spring contest works is you share that link out. The photos, the 10 photos that have the most votes, so the top 10 voted photos, they're going to go before our judge, and our panel of judges is going to decide which one wins the contest. That winner gets a free Zenfolio account for a year. So make sure that if you haven't entered yet, you get entered below. Click that link in the description below this video. I do want to point out it is only available to US at the moment. So this is US only, unfortunately, guys. Also, if you've already entered the contest, don't submit another photo. It's one photo per entry. Uh, if you have entered, like I said, get your share link and start sharing it out on social media. Nine days is more than enough time to get people to vote for your photo and get you in that top 10 list. And speaking of the top 10 list, here are our current top 10 photos as of Tuesday. So in first place, we have Trisha Smathers. She's been holding on to this leading spot with 397 votes. Second place, this is a new one on the leaderboard. We've got Mandy Fiok with 309 votes, Dance Among the Flowers. In third place, we have Marissa Hall with 307 votes. This is Wilmington. And then in fourth place, with 278 votes, Amy Caswell in A Forest of Trees, Be a Flower. Fifth place, 232 votes, David Pickering, enjoying shooting in a brief window of tulips in Missouri for spring of 2019. Sixth place, with 230 votes, we have Norman Brim. Great caption on that photo, Norman. I love that caption. Seventh place, 225 votes, Kylie Panato. This is a photo of all four of her daughters. It's a beautiful photo, I think. Eighth place, this is a new one. This is Aaron Braganza with 211 votes. In ninth place, this is Marina Casino with 210 votes. The photo is titled Free. Another beautiful, all of these are gorgeous photos, you guys. I've been blown away. And in 10th place was a, with 195 votes, Christina Wheeler and Girl Power. So some beautiful photos, you guys. If you haven't gone and reviewed all of the entries yet, make sure that you click that link below. There have been some amazing photos submitted, and I'm super excited to be announcing the winner soon. So nine days left, and then the first Thursday on June is when I'm going to announce the contest winner. So make sure you mark down your count, mark that on your calendar. Make sure you join us on the live stream for that. All right, guys, today we're talking about how to buy prints and products in your account. Then we're going to jump into those site reviews. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are in my Zenfolio account. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can buy prints and products in your account. Right. So like I said, if you need to order some studio samples, maybe you're placing the order on behalf of your client. Maybe you do in-home sales and you want to just go ahead and get that client's orders placed 
right there. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. Now, the first thing way that I'm going to show you, I do not recommend for in-home sales because it's going to let your client see base cost pricing and all of that. Um, so I don't recommend that for in-home sales. This way is the way I recommend doing it if you're ordering studio samples or just ordering things on your behalf for yourself or you know if you're ordering for a client but they're not currently there with you. So what you're going to do is you're just going to navigate to the gallery that you that you want to order from. You're going to navigate to that uh, gallery. Just click on the gallery here. And then you can go to any of the photos that you want. And there's a couple of ways to do it. You can select multiple photos like this. And then you can go to actions. And there should be a buy products right here for all of those photos. Or if you just want to buy for one photo, you can click the little drop down right here and click buy products. Now, a couple of things when you do this, you are buying from all vendors first of all, so make sure that you choose the vendor that you want, but you're buying directly from your account, which means that you're the photographer, obviously, but there is no order approval process. So if you if you upload low resolution files and then you replace them with larger resolution files later on, there's probably going to be some products that you can't order because your image that you have uploaded is not going to meet the resolution requirements. And so you might have to upload your full resolution files. Just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, so now we're on all vendors. Let's click here and let's say that we want to order from MPix. And then we're just going to choose the print or the category that we want. And then we can scroll down here and find out what size of products we can order or we can you know pick these and the system is smart the system recognizes your image size and it will actually tell you the photos that you can't order so the photo that I selected that photo or that image file actually doesn't meet the resolution requirements to be printed as a 10 by 13 or higher print and so I can't even add it to my cart so that means that if I want to order those bigger prints, then I'm going to have to upload a higher resolution image. So what you're going to do is you're just going to click on the products that you want, add them to your cart. You can go ahead and take a look at the cropping, move it around if you want. You're going to get all of the options here. So if you want to choose a different paper type, you can. You can change the color correction. You can add luster coating. If you want to add some framing and mounting, you can do that. You can, um, you know, add whatever frame options you want to add in here. Add a mat if you want to do that. Lots of options that you can do in here. And then you're just going to click that add to cart option right here. All right. So now that has been added to your shopping cart right up here. And then you can just go back and just repeat the same process for the other products that you want and the other photos that you wanted to purchase. Right. So you would just maybe click on another photo. And let's this time, let's do one where we're selecting multiple photos and purchasing a product for that. Now, this is going to use the same product for all photos, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to select this photo. Let's say we want this one and we want this one. All right, and I held Command on my keyboard to multi-select. If you're on a PC, it's going to be holding Control on your keyboard to multi-select. And now once you have the images selected, you're going to go up here to the actions menu and then click buy products. Now we're selecting products for three photos. You can see right up here, it will tell you. And we're in the same lab. And this time let's go to, let's go to, uh, let's do some photo gifts, right? So we're going to do some photo gifts. We'll go down here and maybe let's do, uh, let's see, let's do some buttons. So now it's going to show you the crop for the buttons and you can configure all three photos. So this is product one of three, hit next, next, and you can configure each one individually, changing the options and hitting next. And then once you're happy with that, you just need to click that add to cart button. Now, if there are images where there are white areas, you might need to review the cropping. Otherwise, if you're okay with it, you can say print with white edges and it's going to add those to your cart. Okay, so once you're ready to go, once you have all of the prints and products in there that you want to order, you're going to go to view cart. Click on view cart right there. You can actually scroll down, take a look at everything. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention, but before you actually start placing orders for yourself, it's a good idea to check out your cart. 
I do this all the time. I accidentally add things into my cart and then I get ready to place an order for myself and then I'm reviewing everything and I'm like, oh, I didn't want that. That's from earlier or that's from a test that I was doing, right? So make sure that you review your cart and you don't accidentally purchase something that maybe you had in there from a, a test that you were doing or something because it's almost happened to me several times. Now, so usually what I'll do is I'll go into my cart first and clear it if there's anything in there that I don't want, and then I'll go back and start adding the products in there that I actually want to purchase. But make sure that you just review your cart. Then once it's good, click that proceed to checkout button. And since we purchased and so we, since we selected the products from within our account, it's all going to be at the base lab cost. So it's going to be at your cost. You're not going to be paying your upcharge or your um, pro or your margin. You're not going to be paying that extra that you tagged on. Okay. So next, what you're going to do is enter your shipping address. Now, if you're placing this order for yourself, obviously you want to put your shipping information here. If you're placing this order for a client, you're going to want to put their shipping information in here. If you want this to be delivered directly to them. Otherwise, if you want to have it delivered to you and then you're going to take it to the client, you can go ahead and put your shipping address in here. So wherever you want these prints and products delivered, obviously that's the shipping address that you want to enter in here. Now, something that's really important to pay attention to further down here is the email receipt to option right here. Okay. And this is really important to pay attention to. If you are placing this order on behalf of your client, you need to set that email receipt to go to your email address because the last thing that you want to happen is you don't want that client to get that receipt and to actually see your base cost and see how much you actually get charged for everything. If you're placing this order for yourself, obviously you want to go ahead and keep the email to be your email. But if it's going to a client or for a client, make sure that you're not changing this to your client's email, but leave this to be your email so that that receipt with all the base lab costs, costs and everything actually gets sent to you and not to your client. All right, so once you have that set up, you're just gonna hit that continue to check out option right here. Well, you probably actually have to put information in here, so let me do that really quick. 105, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna go down here, continue to check out. And then what we're going to do is choose how we want to um, the first choose the shipping first. So you're going to choose the shipping option right here, whatever shipping method you want, then click continue to check out. We don't need to apply a coupon code because we have already um, been paying. We're already paying base lab prices, so we don't really need to apply a coupon code. This is where you're going to choose how you're going to pay for this. Now, if you have an account balance, if your account has money in it, You'll actually get an option up here to pay with your account balance, or you can choose to pay with a credit card or something else up here. So however you want to do that, um, you'll get to choose here. Like I said, if your account has money in it, you'll actually get the option to pay with your account balance up here. All right, so that is one way to buy from within your account. So let me show you the next way. So what I'm going to do is just go back, go back again, go back one more time to the cart, and then we're just going to clear the shopping cart out and then let's go back to our account just by going and going right here and going to all photos. Now, the next way I'm going to show you how to place an order is let's say that you want to place an order, but you want to order off of one of your price lists. Maybe you're doing an in-home sales consultation with the client. Um, maybe you just don't want to have to sift through everything. Maybe you know exactly what you want and it's on a price list that you've created. It's definitely possible to do that. Let me show you how. So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a coupon created to help you do this because you don't really want to have to pay the markup. You want to just pay the lab cost. So you're going to go to selling first, go down here to coupons and campaigns, add a new coupon and um, create something that you can remember. So my coupon and I'm just going to say um, me 19 uh, RC. So that'll be my coupon. Create something that you can remember. And then what you're going to do is come down here, coupon value. You're going to discount products, set it to discount to base prices. So this is going to drop that price to the base lab price, but only after you enter the coupon. All right. 
And then what you're going to do is come down here and you're going to go down to applicability, leave it set to, to work for everything. I leave it set to have no limit, no expiration, because this is a coupon code that I'm personally going to be using. I'm not going to be giving it out to anybody and I'm going to use it over and over again, placing orders and different things like that. So I leave it to have no limitations and then we're going to click save. All right. So now that we have that coupon created and we have it saved, what we're going to do is we're going to go to photos. We're going to go to that gallery right here, and then we're going to hit preview and open in a new tab. Okay. And so we're going to jump into this new tab and we're going to click on this. And then if you don't have visit shop up here, if you just use the quick shop, which is what I use and what I recommend, you just start adding stuff to your cart through quick shop. All right, but since you're viewing it like a client here and you're seeing your quick shot pricing, this is not base lab cost. This is with your markup, which is why that coupon code that I just made is so important. So let's say maybe you're doing this with a client. You're going through here. They're picking stuff out and you're going to order it for them and they're paying you directly. Maybe you're going to just go through here, add what they want. And then once you have that stuff in there, you know, conclude the sell session or, or however you do it, then you can go to your cart and proceed to check out. And it's going to be pretty much the same process. So you're just going to be putting in all of that information. You know, if you're going to have it shipped to them, put their shipping address in here. Uh, if you're going to email the receipt, make sure the receipt goes to you because we're going to use that coupon so that we discount it to base products. We're going to hit continue to check out. And then what we're going to do right here is where we're going to apply that coupon code. So we're going to apply that coupon code right here. Hit apply. And if you'll notice, it dropped my um, charge down here of $22. So now I'm just paying the base lab cost and I'm not actually paying my markup. And then I would go ahead and continue to check out after I choose my shipping method and then select how I wanted to pay for this. Now, if you pay for it using a gift certificate that you've created or something like that, just keep in mind that the base lab costs are going to be charged to your account because that money has to go to the lab somehow. And if you're not paying for it through the order, then it's going to be charged to the card that's on your that you have on your account. All right, guys. So those are the two different ways that you can buy prints and products through your account makes it really easy. It's nice to be able to go in there and just purchase that stuff. Like I said, it works really good for if you need to buy like studio samples, maybe you need to just place some personal orders, or if you need to place some orders on behalf of the client, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Make sure that you understand the benefits of both and you have them, um, you know, you kind of understand how it works. The key is never have that receipt emailed to your client if you're only going to pay the base cost and not pay your markup because the last thing that you want to do is let your clients see how much your prints and products cost you. You want them only seeing what you charge them for those prints and products. All right, guys. So now we're going to jump into the site review portion of this. But really quick, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who are hanging out with this live. I know I'm not here to read out your names. I apologize. Um, Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Anyway, make sure that you're showing Katie some love in the chat there. And then for those of you guys who are watching the recorded recording of this, um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. We appreciate your guys' engagement. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week um, and things are just going great for you guys. We're going to start now on the site review side of things. It's really weird doing this without a live, a live chat box to talk to people. So bear with me, guys. This is a little awkward for me. Um, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the site review stuff. All right, so we're going to start here with um, Brendan Nogue Photography, and that address is actually um, bnogueephoto.com. You can see right here. And we're just going to go ahead and start the review here on the homepage. So, hey, Brendan, I think you have a really great homepage set up. Uh, I like that you're using the side panel layout. Um, you've got a lot of good information here. I really like the custom logo. So just starting over here on the left side, let me switch full screen here so you guys can see. Starting over here on the left side, um, I love that you have your location information here. I think that you've done a great job with that. One of the things that was a little strange to me is reading through this information. Up here, you kind of start out 
in a third person tone. And then as you read down, you kind of switch really quick to a first person tone and then you switch back to a third person tone. So it was a little strange for me. Um, I'm not sure I'm using the correct terms for that. Hopefully I am. If I'm not, you guys can definitely make fun of me in the chat and I'll have to read it later. But that's the only thing that was a little strange for me here was kind of switching back and forth between those tones. Um, it's nice that you have your social media links all set up in here. One of the things you can do is you can turn off this powered by Zenfolio if you need to or if you want to. That is controlled in the footer. So even if you have your footer set to hide, that will still show up. So what you need to do is you need to go to customize view, go to edit, and then what you're going to do is go to site footer on the bottom left. And I think it's under elements. You can turn off that powered by Zenfolio, set your footer to back to hide, save it, and then that should go away down there at the bottom. All right. Great stuff on that left side, though. Um, love your images. I think you've got some really great images. I love that you have text over your images. But the one thing that bothers me is that some of those images where the text is placed, like this one's perfect. It's a little hard to read up here, but placement's pretty good. But some of that text is getting lost over here on the left-hand side, like this one right here. So I can't really see it. So what I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you that if you're going to do this, I would take this photo right here, open it up in Photoshop, and set a, set some uh, guidelines around that text. And then use that as a template to make all of your images so that you're keeping that text in this same spot. Now for some of these photos, it might have you might have to swap them or flip them horizontally to actually make that text placement work. But the key is, is that you want to make sure that this text information is visible and not being cut off up here at the top or over here at the left. All right. So definitely something to think about. Now, I haven't counted how many images you have here on the home page, um, but I think there might be just a hair too many, maybe jump, jump back one or two images. Uh, I didn't count how many there were. But um, maybe like just one or two fewer images, I think, might do might do you a bit of good here. And I like that you have this text. Maybe think about how you can work it into kind of telling a story. So I know a lot of it's probably client quotes. If you can think about, one, the amount of time that the image is actually showing, is it enough time for somebody to read that full text? Two, how can I take bits and pieces of this text put it on different images and get it to play in a specific order and at the same time showing cl client quotes also kind of have it tell a little bit of a story about me or my business or about weddings or something to make it a little bit more engaging. Um, so those are my kind of my feedback on the homepage. Let's go ahead and check out your site menu. I like that you have the little white around it up here at the top. Definitely keeps your menu items from getting lost. So let's just go ahead and start right here. We'll take a look at your wedding photos. And now I have to be honest, when I clicked this, I was expecting this to be a wedding photo uh, portfolio gallery. I have a video here, um, which is a great video, by the way. I love that you have a video in here. And if I scroll down, it, it, it is a gallery, but it's like a single image and you have to scroll. So there are a lot of photos in here. Um, they're just a lot of photos. And it takes me a lot of scrolling to actually get down here and see them all. So what... I would suggest here, Brendan, is to take this gallery, customize the thumbnail and the grid pattern, make them a little bit smaller so we can actually view this like a thumbnails page. And then I would also think about the number of images you have here. I would try to highlight your 10 to 15, maybe 10 to 20 absolute best images for your wedding portfolio here. And that would be it. So if it doesn't fall on the 10 to 20 best, I would probably go ahead and get rid of it, make these thumbnails smaller so I can view this as a thumbnails page because then I have the option of clicking on them and seeing them in this larger view. So as a visitor, I want to go here and get a quick overview and then click and view the images larger that I'm actually interested in looking at rather than having to spend a bunch of time scrolling down and viewing them one at a time. Okay, now the next thing is, is you do have some information up here in your... Um, your caption right here, I think that's great. Maybe adds a little bit more information in the caption because that information is good for your SEO. But also down here at the bottom 
one of the things that I noticed is I'm not seeing any categories and keywords down here at the bottom. So down here, Zenfolio has a built-in categories and keyword option. As long as you categorize the keywords, your galleries, and your images, it'll show up down here and it doesn't kind of clutter up the gallery. It's kind of hidden out at the bottom. But search engines still can read it, so can visitors, and it helps your SEO. However, I do see a bunch of categories and keywords and stuff down here in your footer, and this doesn't make for a very nice presentation. Honestly, Brendan, I would probably hide this footer and actually get those keywords in your images and get them showing up here on the gallery. Um, and if you're not 100% sure how to do that, I did do a Zenfolio Live a couple of weeks, weeks back on optimizing your photos for search and I cover that in a lot of detail. So if Katie can throw that link out to you guys in chat, or if you guys just want to find it, just go to our Zenfolio Live archive. I think it's like three or four weeks back. It's going to say how to optimize your photos for search. So go check that out. That'll show you how to get that categories information here. Down here on the bottom, this footer, I would hide it. I understand that you probably want to have this down here, which is pretty cool. So then what you might want to do is just hide all this other redundant information down here, especially the search. If you're not optimizing for search, if you don't, if, if I ask you, hey, do you want people to search for their photos? Are you optimizing for it? And your answer is not a yes, I want people to and I'm optimizing. If it's like, well, you know, it'd be nice. Go ahead and remove that um, if you're not optimizing for that. The other thing I notice here is that I can search all of Zenfolio or your site, which means that visitors can be taken away from your site to potentially another photographer's site. So something to keep in mind on that search field. Make sure that you are very intentional about this stuff. I would remove that. I would hide all this stuff, to be honest, except for maybe the sign up for my newsletter and this, and I would hide this and get those captions and, and stuff up here on the gallery. All right. Beautiful photos, though, uh, Brittany. I think you've got some great photos. Uh, maybe, like I said, a little bit too many in this gallery, and they're also, I think, a little bit larger. What do you guys, or too large? What do you guys think in chat? Do these photos feel just a little bit large to you? I think it would be easier to get them down to something like this where they fit nicer on the page. We can see more at once. And then if we want to view this larger, we just click on the image. Let me know what you guys think about that in chat. All right, let's keep going. Let's go back up to the top. Let's keep going because I have a whole another site to get reviewed as well. All right, so we're going to go up here. Let's go check out your engagement photos. All right, engagement photos. So this is looking a little bit more like what I would want to see. I think the photos are probably still a little bit too large. I would like to see at least four photos on a row here. Um, you know, so I th just to make the browsing a little bit more convenient. And then you can see how small the scroll bar is right here. That means there's a lot of scrolling that I have to do. So what I would suggest here is make those photos a little bit smaller and let's make sure that we are you know, being intentional with the photos that we're showing here. We don't want to show too many because we don't want the clients lingering here and trying to look at all these photos. We want to show just enough that they're like, yes, I love this person's work. Let me move on to the next step. So 10 to 20 photos is usually what I try to target of your best. If you had 10 to 20, if you could only show somebody 10 or 20 photos, which ones would you show? That was, that's what needs to be here. Now, I love that you've got the engagement photography stuff up here under the caption. I think that's great. Some of the things that you might think about adding to your captions are specific locations. Like I see that you have, I think the name of, is this a town? I'm not sure. Uh, I know that's a location, but maybe some landmark mentions, you know, your favorite place to do engagement shoots. A little bit of more information in here is going to do nothing but good for your SEO. And then the categories, captions, and keywords for these images as well. You can categorize and caption your gallery, and then you can categorize and caption your images and keyword them as well. And all of that can show, and it doesn't clutter up your page, it goes down at the bottom. Now, I think something I didn't mention before was the, um, the social media icons here. So I would probably hide these if it were me just on my portfolio. Um, up to you. It's going to be under uh, go to the go to the page and edit view. It's going to be under options, and then I think it's thumbnails, and then it's a little center section. You can hide the social media icons. What these do is this will let somebody share this photo out on that social media platform. 
Now it doesn't actually share the photo out of your gallery. It shares the photo as a thumbnail with a link back to this gallery. So if anybody clicks on it, they're gonna come back here. So up to you if you want that showing or not. But let's just scroll down here to the bottom. Again, you've got some amazing photos in here. Absolutely gorgeous photos. So, you know, going through here and defining which ones are your best, you have definitely got a, a, a job cut out for you doing that. But I would, like I said, definitely go in here and probably cull these down just a little bit. But let's check out the bottom here. So again, we're not seeing the categories and captions. Um, also too, like the social media buttons right here. If you're gonna show these guys, call in some favors from your friends. The last thing you want somebody seeing is your portfolio with zero likes. So either hide this stuff right here or call in a favor from a few of your friends, have them go in there and like this so that when I'm here and I get to this, I don't see zero likes. I've already talked about the footer, but the same thing that I said previously applies on this page as well. I would probably honestly go ahead and just hide most of this stuff and just have that and your newsletter. All right, let's get back up to the top of the page here really quick. And uh, let's go check out some more of your pages. So we're gonna go down to wedding pricing. And this is a, a looks like a custom page. So let's see, you've got this really cool image quote right here. Or this image with this quote. You've got some text information. And then you have the wedding collection and you have a contact to learn more button in the actual text. So I love this. This makes it so easy if I'm a visitor and I'm interested in learning more. I click that and it takes me to your contact page. All right, so that is the perfect setup right here. Now the one thing that you might think about doing is you might think about looking into using pre-order for letting people go ahead and pay for their sessions. I did do, uh, I did do, I did a couple of um, live streams on that. So if you're interested, go back and check it out. It's like pre -order, using pre-order to sell sessions or to collect session fees or something like that. Um, the links are gonna be on our YouTube channel. But I love that you have that call to action right here in the text, so important. Even though you have a contact button right up here, it's so important to meet your visitors and hit them right when that urge hits them so they don't have to go back up and look. You're telling them what to do right here. So great setup. And I love that you have these images with this little bit of text over it right here. Just a comp, you know, a complimenting, is that the right word? Complimenting these pages and, and here just adding to it. I think you've done a great job. Again, same thing applies on the footer. So I'm not going to go back over that. Let's keep moving forward here. Now, one of the things that I've noticed and I have yet to mention is that now that we're on uh, some galleries, we're using your header menu, which is this right here. And I'm not seeing a custom logo up here anywhere. So you might think about going into your header settings and setting your custom logo to show in there as well. So go to site header, first go to customize website view, and then you're going to go to site header in the bottom, go to the logo tab, upload your custom logo in there, make sure it's set to show. The other thing as well, while we're talking about the header, while you're in there, go ahead and turn off this search bar if you're not using it. If you're using it, at least go ahead and remove the option to search for all Zenfolio and leave it just to your site. So make sure that you're taking care of that. The last thing that you want a visitor or somebody to do is to go in here and try to search and find something and maybe come across something that they shouldn't have found in the first place. Right, so again, this is something that you wanna make sure that you are very intentional. So see, I put in portraits and I'm seeing a lot of what's probably client galleries that shouldn't be visible, especially the ones with the little stars, that means they're password protected. So if you want people to use that, make sure you know how it works and you have it set up correctly. Otherwise, go ahead and turn that option off. All right, okay, let's go to your FAQ page. Let's check that out. All right, so here we are on your FAQ page. Uh, this looks like it is a custom page, but whatever images were here or whatever was here before, it looks like it's not working. So guys, it's really important that at least once a month you do a reality check on your website. Check your links, test your pages out. Things break, things change. You wanna make sure that you are checking it and testing it to make sure that things are working right. 
um, it looks like whatever images you had on here are um, are gone, are not working. Maybe they were deleted. Maybe they were set private by you, which is why it's so important that when you are test your website out, you do that in a new incognito window. So if you're not familiar with how that works, um, Google Chrome will let, actually let you do a new incognito window. So if you go to file and then new incognito window, put your website address in there and test that out. That way you're actually seeing it like a visitor because sometimes what will happen is you'll use a photo that's private or password protected on a custom page and then all of a sudden it's not showing up here. So, so important to test your website out like an actual visitor so you can catch these things. I think you have a lot of good information in here. Um, again, just those images, um, but really good information. Nice uh, job actually taking the time to create this page. So I think you've done a great job there. Just get in there, figure out what happened to those images and why they're not showing up. All right, let's move on to the contact page. This is going to be the Zenfolio built-in contact page. Perfectly fine to use, nice, simple, pretty much already set up. Good job having that there. Let's check out your about page really quick. All right, so on your about page, you've got a couple of images of yourself. I think this is fantastic. And then you have your text in here. Some information about you. You've got a nice little headshot. And then you've actually taken the time here to create your own logos for your social media and upload them here. Let's take a look at these links here. All right, so this is going to Adele right here. And so check this out, Brendan. One of the things you want to make sure you're doing is anytime you're creating a link that's going outside of your Zenfolio account, you want to make sure that that link opens in a new tab. Because if I'm a visitor, I'm visiting your site and I click on this, it is taking me to this website in the same exact tab. And now I am losing all of your Zenfolio navigation and all of your account navigation. So make sure that any link that you set up that is going to take people outside of your Zenfolio account, that you have that set up to open in a new tab. All right. Okay. So let's go back up to the top. Let me just reset this. Let's go back up to the top and let's keep moving along. Let's check out your blog really quick. All right. So March 13th, 2019, March, April, May, you're about two months behind, Brendan. So if you're going to have a blog, make sure you're blogging at least once a month. It doesn't have to be anything extensive. It doesn't have to be anything really detailed. Just make sure that you are keeping that blog updated once a month so that when people come in here, they're not like, oh, two months ago. Um, I wonder what's going on. If they just haven't been busy, if they haven't been in, if they've been on vacation, are they still in business? Like, make sure that you are keeping that stuff up to date. Let's Let's take a quick preview at your blog post here, though. All right, so you've got, this is perfect. I mean, guys, when you write a blog post, location, wedding photographer at a specific location and a specific venue. This is the kind of stuff that you need to put in your blog post to help you with your SEO. And then you've got a lot of nice information in here. You've link back, linked back to that resort. That is awesome. Hopefully you've shared this blog post with that resort and asked them if you can get a link back to your site as well. Such a great thing to do. Information about the resort is here. This is fantastic. Let's see. It looks like there's a lot more photos as well. So let's just keep viewing down here. Now, one of the things you might think about doing is breaking up some of these photos, you know, with some text in between. Uh, but I think you've done a great job. Oh man. Nice. Really nice blog post. Uh, I the images there's a little little too much of a bunch of images in a row without something kind of breaking them up for me. I just kind of get stuck in the scroll. I'd like to see some te more text in there between the images, kind of breaking them up just a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, um, but I think they've done an amazing job on this blog post. You've got so much good information in there, so much SEO value and so much real value for your visitors. I think you did a great job on that blog post. So, so nice work there. All right, client access. It's going to be the last page I'm going to look at, and then we'll jump to the next site. You've got information here about how to get in contact with you. I bet if we click this, what does this do? That goes to your contact page, which is perfect. So that's really nicely set up. You have the gallery ID option here. 
and a nice photo. Now, one of the things I usually say about the client access page is that this page is for your clients. So this is a nice place to actually tell them thank you, right? To show some appreciation, maybe make a photo there of just you saying thank you, write some text in there and tell your clients thank you and how much you appreciate them. Because the only people who are gonna be using this are your actual clients and what a great place to actually show them how much you appreciate them. So Brendan, I think you've done a great job. A couple of things on the homepage, the text on those images, um, and then the stuff that we talked about in the galleries about condensing the images down a little bit, getting them categorized and keyworded. Overall though, I think you've got a great site, just a few minor things and we can really have your site looking really sharp. All right guys, so let's jump on to the next website, which is going to be, I think this is BZM Studio Photography. So the website address is actually bzmstudio.com. We're just going to start the review right here on the homepage. So first of all, the first thing I notice is that you do have, and I can't keep dropping this down, but you do have a nice little custom logo up here, a favicon. But here I on your header menu, I'm not seeing a custom logo. So I would definitely recommend getting that custom logo in here on your site header so that you're starting that branding recognition with your visitors and with your site with your with your clients making sure that you're using the same branding across your entire website want to see a custom logo up here all right for the images there are quite a few images here on the home page so i would probably condense these down just a little bit because that is a lot of scrolling and we don't really want people staying on the home page so when i have a grid homepage setup I'm thinking like the top image from each like each genre that I photograph so if you do weddings portraits maybe senior photography maybe events and corporate headshots the number one photo out of each one of those showing here just as a quick display image because we don't want people to stay here right we want people to progress past this point I don't want them browsing here I want them going directly to a portfolio and then going to either an information page or getting in touch with me. Okay. The other thing too, is that we have this little hover here. Again, this is probably something that on the homepage, I would probably hide. I would go in and probably remove the options of these showing so that when we hover our image over or our mouse over, nothing really happens. The photo stays the same. Okay. All right. So next, if we click this home button, let's see what happens here. All right. So it's taking me back to the same exact page. That's something that you might want to think about here. Do you need that home button showing here um, so that people kind of get confused? It's like, well, home, I thought I'm on the home page, <laughs> but uh, just something to think about. Okay. Beautiful photos though. Uh, some nice lacrosse photo right here. Let's see what else we have. Just absolutely gorgeous photos. You guys have done the, the Brendan and BZM. Both of you guys' photos are just absolutely gorgeous. If I didn't, if I didn't say it earlier, they are just beautiful photos. Let's go ahead and check out your portfolio. So we're going to start up here at weddings. And so one of the things I'm noticing is immediately when I do that, I am seeing a totally different grid style. So this looks like I might be on actual client galleries here. Um, so this is a group page with a square grid and these look like separate client galleries. This is Fine if you want to do it this way, but as a visitor, whenever I get to stuff like this, you know, I, I have the feeling that people tend to think like, oh, is this something I'm supposed to see? This looks like it's for clients. Should I be here? And then wondering if I'm a client, are my photos going to show up here? And so what I really would suggest was rather than having to where they can click in here and view client galleries, because client galleries should be set up a little bit differently. The focus on client galleries should be totally different than the focus of portfolio galleries. Client galleries are for your clients to go in, browse all of their photos, pick out the ones they love, buy them, share them with friends. A portfolio gallery's focus is to show people the best work that you've done and encourage them and, and let them know that you are a photographer that they can work or they wanna work with, that you have the skill set that they're looking for, that your style is what they're looking for. So client galleries and portfolio ga galleries should have two totally different purposes. And two, as a visitor to your site, you know, I'm not sure that I really want to browse through an entire wedding. 
Like I just feel like it would be much better served if I go to weddings portfolio and I'm hit with a gallery that shows your top 10 to 20 wedding images from different galleries. That is what I would like to see here. The other thing too is that this square grid right here, not so bad on most of these photos, but you have to be careful using the square grid because it does crop into your images. And if this is the only page that they look at and they don't progress past this point, and you just happen to have a really poor example here where the photo's getting cropped off really bad, you don't want to let your visitors leave with that in their mind of seeing a photo that's a bad crop because it's the square grid. So something else to think about there using that square grid. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your engagements. All right, and engagements looks like it's the same thing. Beautiful photos, but I feel like I'm looking into client galleries. And what I want to see is the best of the best photos all in one space for engagements so that I don't have to, as a visitor, I don't have to bounce in and out of these galleries. I can just scroll on this one page and be like, okay, this person's a really talented engagement photographer. Let's go reach out to them or let's go find out more information about them. All right, so that is what I would suggest. Let's click in here and just take a look at one of these really quick. The other thing too, is that with client galleries, a lot of times you're gonna put watermarks on them. And I'm not sure that watermarks is the best presentation that you want visitors seeing when they're looking at your portfolio. So again, client galleries have one intention and one in focus and portfolio galleries should have a totally different intention with a completely different focus. One, you're trying to get your clients to buy the photos, you're presenting them to them, you're letting them pick their favorites for proofing, you know, you're setting it up for that um, and you want your clients to be able to browse through all of their photos, whereas a portfolio gallery, you have a short window to show those visitors this is why you should hire me as your photographer because I did these images and I'm this talented. So something to think about. Uh, so again, I would definitely consider actually setting up a portfolio that's not consisting of client galleries. If you want to have a section where visitors can go in and look at client galleries, maybe you have a recent client section, but I would still strongly recommend that you have a dedicated simplified portfolio section for people to just go and browse the best of your work. All right, so let's keep going really quick. All right, so in here, same thing. A lot more options in here, but again, you know, as a visitor, I'm like, should I be able to see all these? And if I'm a client, are my photos gonna show up here? You know, so I just would definitely reconsider the way that you have this stuff set up. Your photos are gorgeous. Um, I think your website layout is perfectly fine other than just the way that these portfolios are set up. All right, let's just keep going here. See if we can find anything in here. The other thing as well is that your portfolio galleries, you need to have those images keyworded. You need to have captions on them. All that stuff needs to be showing so that you get some SEO benefit out of it. Right now, this gallery, all I can see are images, all search engines can see our images. You're not getting any SEO benefit out of this. Um, so having a portfolio gallery set up where you can have it tagged, professional headshots, lifestyle shoot, lifestyle portrait, you know, business headshots, business portraits, corporate portraits, having all that stuff keyworded and then having a good strong caption in there is gonna help the discoverability of that page, which is in turn gonna help the discoverability of your website and hopefully will get you showing up better on Google, which will get you more contacts, hopefully, is what we're aiming at, right? So just some things to think about there. All right, uh, I think we're done with the portfolio review. I'm sure probably most of these are gonna be the same. Let's see here. Now this one is totally different. Well, no, it's the same, it just has, only has that one gallery. So see, here is another example too, where, so where this is a little confusing because as a visitor, I clicked on real estate, I went here and now if, if I didn't hover over this, I would be thinking, okay, is this the only real estate photo that they have as a tennis court? And then they have to click on that to actually get in here, which is then questioning, why did I have to click twice to get here? So a couple of things that you need to think about there. Let's go ahead and check out your info pages. So let's go to your about page. All right, so great portrait here. 
And then you've got some information in here. Let's see. So right here is where I finally get your location. That's one of the things I didn't mention on the homepage was I didn't see any location information on your homepage. Definitely something you should think about. But here on the about info page, I see some location information here. Again, guys, I am such a huge video advocate. I think having a video on your about page is going to let your visitors connect with you because once they've seen your work and they're like, yes, this photographer does amazing work. The next thing that they're going to ask is, is this photographer going to be somebody that I'm going to enjoy working with, right? Are they going to be fun? Are they going to get me? Are we going to connect or is there going to be drama and issues, right? So what better way to let your personality come across to visitors than to record a short video, maybe show some behind the scenes B footage, um, maybe a few short client testimonials, putting all of that information together on an about video, you know, two or three minutes long, max, two or three minutes long, max. Um, and having that here, what a great way to let those visitors connect with you and hopefully progress them on to the next stage, which would be to make that contact to actually reach out to you and contact you and, and, and talk about hiring you as a photographer. So we have your about page. Let's check out your investment page. All right, so we have your investment page here, headshot branding. So this is just some information about your session. And then you have your phone number here. I would probably put a little bit more information in here, dress this page up a little bit, maybe add in some photos, um, add in, I would definitely add in some photos. So maybe what you would want to think about is separating these out into these sections here, separating each one of these out into kind of sections, having a photo that represents each session, and then you can have the title, the cost, and then maybe a couple of bullet points below it discussing the service that you offer. So, you know, headshot and, and portrait branding or headshot branding portrait sessions, have a little photo of that and then have the cost. And then underneath there, you know, have one hour session, two locations, you know, three outfit changes or whatever. So that when I come here, I know all the details about each one of these sessions and um, you know, I don't have to question like, okay, well, what am I going to get exactly for $150? Like, is this just a, you show up for one hour, take my photos and then that's it. Or like, so having a little bit more information in there, I think is going to be really helpful on this page as well. And then having those images there also too, it's nice having your phone number show up here. You could also go ahead and link to your contact page as well. So, and having that in each section, if you create those sectioned out, like I was talking about having that call to action in there in each section is going to be really helpful as well, because it's going to let people react on those impulses where they're like, Oh, I want to reach out to this person right now. Having that link in there where they can do that is going to be really, really helpful for them and make it as easy as possible. All right, let's check out your client corner really quick. <clears throat> All right, and then client corner says to type the password to continue. So I'm assuming that this is set up for an existing client who would know the password. This though is a group password or a gallery password. So if I entered the password, if I knew it, I would be going directly into either one group or one gallery. If you're trying to set up and use client access, that's a little bit different. Make sure that you know the difference between gallery access and client access. Client access uses a gallery ID that once entered takes the client directly to their gallery versus gallery access is a password that gives somebody access directly to just one gallery or one group. So there's a big difference between the gallery access and the client access. There are some videos on our channel that cover both of those in great detail. So make sure that you check those videos out and you understand how that client access works and how the gallery access works. Make sure that you're setting it up appropriately so that you have this working the way that you want to work. Overall though, I think you've got a really great site. Uh, a couple of things, the portfolio section, I would really strongly rethink the way that's set up. Much cleaner navigation is needed there, I feel like. I feel like going into those different client galleries is just taking too much time. 
uh, I feel like if you have it go to just a wedding portfolio where it's your top 20 wedding images versus having the different client galleries, it's going to serve you better there. Like I said, if you want to have a recent client section, that's fine. Let's get a portfolio section set up that's specifically created for just your site visitors so that they know that they're in the right place and they can quickly browse your work to decide whether you're a photographer they want to hire or not. And making that process as simple and requiring as little amount of clicks as possible is only going to increase the odds of them reaching out to you and contacting you. Your custom logo here. We need to get a custom logo up here. You have one up at the top right here. I just don't see one down here. Now, one of the things that I purposely skipped over, but I'm going to talk about that right now, is under the info. Oh, sorry, not under the info. Where was it at? Maybe it was under the info. On one of these pages, there was a link that looked broken, and I don't remember where it was at. Here we go. So right here on your homepage. Okay, so this is your homepage menu. So if I go back to your homepage, if we go over info, you'll notice that there's an extra space right here. You need to go in and delete that or actually make it link to something because what it's opening to is it's opening to just a blank page where nothing is, nothing exists. So it's uh, that's that um, info page. So make sure that you go in there and that you uh, clean that up and you get that deleted and you have all that stuff working. All right, guys. That's it for the site reviews. I do want to say, th say thank you to both of you guys for submitting your sites for review. Uh, you guys had some beautiful images. Just a few things that I would consider going back and going over and looking at um, there. So hopefully that site review was helpful. And hey, if you have not had your site reviewed yet and you've submitted it, I promise we're working to try to get to those. There's just so many coming in that it's hard for me to keep up. So many people are requesting that. Keep doing it. If you haven't submitted your site yet, please feel free to use the link in the description below the video and submit your site to be reviewed. Um, just give me some patience or just give me some time. Have a little bit of patience with me. We're trying to get to them. If you've already submitted your site, you don't need to go back through and submit it again. We are taking them as we come and we're going to be getting to them as soon as possible. So thank you guys so much to those of you who have been have already submitted your site. And like I said, we're going to get to those as soon as possible. Katie's actually going to be starting up doing some site reviews as well as Richard. So on Tuesdays, you guys are going to be hearing a couple of different voices come in there. Hopefully um, that keeps things entertaining. I, you guys have to get tired of hearing my voice all the time. I know that I do. But hey, I want to say thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I know I wasn't live. I wish that I was. But thank you again so much to those of you guys who hung out with me today in the chat, who talked to Katie Ask some probably really awesome questions. I know she took really good care of you guys. Make sure that you come back next week because I am going to be live next week. And um, if you have any questions, whether you're watching the live version of this now or you're watching the recorded version of this, make sure that you're using the link in the description below the video that says questions for next week so you can submit those questions and I will get those answered next week. Also, if you're not subscribed to us in iTunes, make sure that you go check us out in the iTunes podcast directory. Subscribe to us there. You'll actually get the recorded version of the live stream sent to you when you subscribe to us. So that way, if you need to go back and watch it again, you need to you know pause, fast forward, all that stuff. You can do it wherever you like to watch podcasts, whether it's from your phone or your iPod or wherever you do that. Do they still have iPods? I think I still have an iPod. So wherever you watch podcasts, you'll be able to watch the live version recording or the recorded version of the, the live stream there. It usually takes a couple of hours before it's actually published out, but that's the best way to get it. All of you guys who are still hanging out, if you could do me a big favor and give this video a thumbs up, let Katie know how much you guys appreciate her. And then if you haven't interacted with our chat support team yet, make sure that you click this little icon right here Reach out to our support team. If nothing else, let them know how much you guys appreciate them. They do such a phenomenal job taking care of you guys, and they have such a passion for you guys. So let them know how much you appreciate them. And, hey, make sure that you go and you do something good for somebody this week. Make sure that you give somebody a compliment. Be a voice of encouragement for somebody. Lift somebody up. Give somebody a hand. And let's work together together to make this world a better place because we need it 
You guys are awesome, and I will see you guys all next week here on Zenfolio Live. Don't forget Site Review Tuesday coming up on Tuesday, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful and safe weekend. Hey, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you click that subscribe button. And if you're watching the recorded version of this and you'd like to learn more about Zenfolio, I recommend watching some of the videos that you should see popping up on your screen.